Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I'm hoping my video's going all right here. Didn't seem like it was loading, um, but now it looks like it did. Hope so. So, good morning. Oh, yeah, here comes everyone. Good morning, Anita. Hi, Irma. How are you? Hi, Susie. Welcome, everybody. I didn't know if I was going to be able to paint today. My husband's been painting my studio on almost white just to kind of brighten things up, and it, it needed a little bit of a facelift. So everything I have is displaced. Like, I had to dig around to find everything I needed to paint this morning. Um, but I think I have what I need. We will see. Good morning, Ellen. How are you? Hi, Linda. Good morning, Rhonda. Oh, welcome, everybody. It's nice to see all of you. So I am excited to paint. I had one casualty yesterday when I was... Um, moving everything around I put my palette that I used that uh, marble one I propped it up and it fell over and broke so I was a little bummed but actually it's a little too small so I need to figure out a new solution to that so I had one of these boxes what are they called they're called um here I have the lid here so don't forget what it's it's called a Masterson I'm my Masterson box here which I think a lot of people use for acrylic painting but I thought it'll it'll do for now till I figure out what happens I do have a spare one that I use when I do art shows I mean art shows when I teach but it has little feet on it and it's up a little raised up a little bit oh and that's not even the bad part it has like a big dark um line through the middle of it that I'm not crazy about but that could happen to come back in, in here and get used. I don't know. Or I could go to the countertop store and, and see if I could buy a new one. But I wish they were just a little larger. Actually, I think I guess I could. Are you a teacher? From, um, yes, I do teach. Yeah, I do. And it's so much fun. Okay, anyway, long story short. Um, uh, my table's super clean. I love that. So let me turn this around and show you. Whoops. I want to paint this today. It's tulips from Market. I don't think I painted this yet with you guys. Um, yeah, see, my everything's clean. I have a whole white tabletop, and I'm trying to decide about getting like a tabaret. Oh, so the whole point of doing this is that on my wall over here, let me pull this out and show you. Good morning, Martha. On the wall over here, I used to have shelves and my husband's gonna put up like, like a wall easel that I'll be able to put large paintings up there to paint. So that was the whole point that started the whole shift in my art studio. Yeah, that light, the lightness. They were kind of a brownish, topish color before and when we painted down here, I wanted it to be warm and cozy because it was like a hangout spot for when my kids were young and they'd have friends over, but that's totally not what the space is anymore. It needs to be light and bright and airy. So, okay. So what do I need to mix here? Like, how fun is this? I painted this, I think it's a 16 by 16 and it sold at my last workshop that I did and I love it. Um, it's, I don't know, there's something cool about the photograph. It's very dynamic. Um, sometimes I don't know why. Good morning, Allie. Happy, happy Wednesday. So I need kind of pinks, peaches, greens, and like a neutral grayish color in the background. So let me pull this down here and mix up some colors. The good thing on this palette is I don't have to worry about a hot spot of the light. I can leave the light on. That's one perk. I don't know how I'm going to like working with these edges here, but the nice thing is that this all, this is a little small for me that I wish it was larger, but um, the nice thing is there's a lid so I can close this up and hopefully then my, good morning, Emerson. How are you? I can um, keep, have my paints last a little longer. We'll see. I always chalk up a little tragedy like that to mean that it's time for a change, right? I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up. I need a really dark green and a little bit neutral. So I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of red in there just to keep desaturate it. Oh, and I don't know what it'll be like. Well, this is obviously I've never even used this before. I just had it in my closet. Just waiting for a tragedy to come along and for me to need to use it. 
Because if you did this with, with, a, with acrylics, you could just peel them off when you're finished. But that's not how it works when you're painting with um, oils. So we shall see. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. So today I'm painting some really pretty pink and peach tulips. Yeah, so we started this project over the weekend, and so it's been, I feel a little out of place, like nothing's where it belongs, but that's all right. It's going to be well worth it. I don't have that brown piece in mind. Oh, you can get, a, I think it's the same brand as Masterson. And like I said, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work because um, I don't know if the oil paint's going to stain it or not. We shall see. Yeah, what's usually in here? Like a glass one, or I think a piece of glass. I can't remember what the insert normally is. Oh, and oh, oh, well, and I know it. You get it like little sponge. You get a sponge for underneath this, and then when you do your um, acrylic painting, you wet the sponge underneath, and it keeps your paints wet longer. This is the other thing I need to fix. This table bops around, which makes my holder bop around, and I I want to figure that out too well. Well, I have nothing on this desktop, but look at, look at this one over here. It's like everything's full. Everything is displaced. The wood coated with anything you could varnish to make it easy to clean. Oh, that's a good idea, Ellen. You're so smart. I have no idea. I guess I will find out. Probably should have saw that before I started painting, but that's all right. Um, okay, now pinks, and then I need, oh, this, I know. I put transparent red out. I don't know if I need transparent red, but let's play with it. It's something new and different, right, that we haven't, I haven't really used. So I want, like, for the insides of the flowers to be a little desaturated, so what should I put in there? I think I'll just put a touch of this gray that I have out here. Let's see what that does. I kind of desaturated that a little bit. I'm going to go to a brighter pink and to yellows. What was your dark green mix? Linda, I used, um, for the very, very dark, I used this permanent sap green. I love this Michael Harding color. Allie said the painting you posted yesterday is gorgeous. I love it too, Allie. Thank you. It was one of those ones that the messy middle was was a really long thing to keep the faith through, but it did turn out. It turned out pretty. I have lots of pictures. Those were poppies that I got at market. Was it just this past Saturday or did I get them a week ago? I must have gotten them a week ago because I have so many photos of them already. And I um I want to paint that large too, one of those. You will see. Wasn't that pretty? Did I miss a question? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, so I've got to figure out how to keep this, keep my table more steady, too. It's time to solve a couple problems, things I haven't taken care of in a long time. Oh, that's pretty, too. Where am I going to put that? That's kind of dark. Put that over there. I actually don't have any white out here in my palette. <clears throat> to get some white. I don't need it yet. Yeah, so I want to get a big, like, tabaret thing that rolls around so that when I'm painting on my wall over here, I can have my palette in front of me. So I was kind of looking them up this morning. I think I found one. If anybody has any suggestions, let me know. All right, I need a little white. Oops. Can you tell us your palette and tell us the color you pick and mix with? That would be helpful. Sure. I can, if I can keep myself thinking about it while I'm painting. I always say it's like scratching my head and, and, and uh, <laughs> what, patting my head and scratching my stomach? No, scratching my head and patting my stomach to talk and paint and mix. <clears throat> so right now I'm working with a mix of permanent rose 
and I used a little bit of this pink. This is of a sorry color that I love. This is um, this uh, rosebud. It's called. Oh, and the brand of the the pink that I love is. Um, let me see if I can find it. It's Windsor Newton, but it's a color I use all the time, and I can't find it. Here it is well-loved tube of paint called permanent rose that's my favorite bright pink to use <laughs> oh helen my i was just telling everybody i am um, painting my studio and everything was moved around and i moved my palette off the table to clean like the paper that i had underneath and it fell over and broke like in three pieces so it's a goner so I have to decide what to do now about replacing it or it's a little bit of a sad day for me. I decided it was meant to be. I'm going to take this and just desaturate it a little bit. I have this color out, which is another Vasari color that I like to use to mix in. And it's called Terra Verte Brentonico Extra Pale. And it just kind of desaturates the color a little bit. It's actually white with something in it. But see how muted that made that color? Like that's a nice desaturated pink. It's not as bright and loud. I could keep this pink out as I mix. Like Linda says, what yellow do you add to sap green? I have trouble with greens. Oh, well, that's a really good question. So I love sap green is one of my favorites. I do play with other greens, but sap green is a great color it's very versatile and you can either warm it up like with indian yellow or you can cool it down with lemon yellow so i use both whether i want the color to go a little warmer or a little cooler keep that out and i need to mm, i might need to add a little red into this Hmm. Um, let's see what pink will do. I'm not sure what permanent rose is going to do to that color. Oh, no, that's really nice. Okay. thought I was going to need to get a, red, a true red out of my color bin, but I don't need to. Um, I might need a little more of that. Um. And I kind of line my color up by value a little bit. So I need kind of a darker color for my dark areas of my peachy looking tulips. That's nice. That's very similar to that. I want to lighten that a little bit maybe. So maybe I'll take, um, this is a color I don't usually use and I have it on my palette today just because of the, the colors in this painting. And it's this cadmium yellow deep. It's a Williamsburg color. Yeah, let's hope I can get the painting to glow. We shall see. All right. Um, oh, I can put that up here. And then I need kind of more lightish, peachish colors. Let's see what we get. I think of that. That's that's nice. It's desaturated. It's not a real bright color. Um, yeah, I think that's good. And now I need to mix a brighter peach. And normally I would use I have that one color that I love. I can't even think what it's called. It's like a peach color, but I, for the life of me, cannot find it anywhere. I looked this morning, and I cannot find it. So... When you don't have it, you just figure out another solution, right? So that's a nice start. That's this cadmium yellow deep. And I'm just going to lighten that with white and see what it looks like. Oh, for the highlights of the peach. Yeah, that's really nice. So I need that. And then I need that a little lighter. And I also need a little desaturated. And then I need my background color. Um, I'm going to desaturate it. This is that sh ship rock color that I love. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Not totally desaturated it. 
So desaturation means that it doesn't have, it's not as bright or as, as, oh yes, the Montserrat. Yes, that's it, Allie. I lost it. I don't know where it went. Give me a little bit more white. I don't even know what white I used before. But I, how can I lose a tube of paint? Like, well, if you saw how many I have, you would know how I could lose one. Oh. That's nice. And then I'll desaturate that a little bit too. Maybe put this blue in there. Or gray or whatever color that is. Really pretty. Okay, then I need a background color. And then I think we're good to go. So I put out gray. This gray is <clears throat> a French slate gray. And I'm going to put, this is that, I just got a new tube of this. This is that color I love. Um, Old Holland Violet Gray. Let me see if that gets too violet looking. I'm doing it down here at the bottom because I don't want to get that white in there. Um, a little more gray, I think. I'm just going to put a touch. I put out here on my palette, I put a... Um, well, I'm not going to find it. Over here it is. Just a little a little dot of this thalo blue-green shade. Just a dot. Whoops, just a dot. It's right here. Just, oh, I'm going to get a hair in here. Oh, wait, hold on. We don't want that. Wait one second. Okay, problem averted. I do like that. It's really pretty. All right, let's just, let's start with that. We can always mix more color if we need to. Cleaning my palette knife off. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up here. Hi, Megan, how are you? <clears throat> Pull this up. a little bit. I have this like when that's in there, but that's all right. I'll put it up higher so you can see. Now for my background color. What am I going to do? I think I need just a little bit of purple out for that too. And then I've been trying for my medium. You know, I've been, have been having medium challenges. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. I'm using 50% GAM Soul and 50% linseed oil. And that's what I have in here, and it feels most like zested that I've figured out so far. Needful. Oh, I love that. Very fun. Yeah, it, this might be a little challenging. Hopefully, I can get it done in my time allotment. We shall see. Yeah, it's a little challenging because, like, it's mixes of colors, like, you know, the pinks, pinks, and yellows. Um, but the challenge part of it all is always fun. And this. Um. Oh, in Spanish. Yeah, I don't speak Spanish. Barely even French. Okay, I have one back here. And I'm not too particular about how I do this. It's just to kind of map out where things go. <clears throat> Indian yellow, which doesn't seem to be out here on my palette anymore. Let me get a little bit more of that. Hold on, hold tight. Um, gosh, okay, here it is. I think I need to do a little of a sorry shopping. It 
So how's everyone doing today? Where are you listening from? Watching. <laughs> Watching or listening. I don't know what the right term is. I guess you're really doing both. Very difficult. Très difficile, yes. I don't know. Sometimes the more difficult, the more challenging it is, the more fun it is. Um, always, I like to kind of push that a little bit. <clears throat> I think it's the only way to learn is to work on things out of your comfort zone. Watching from Cambridge, UK. Ellen's in Central Florida. Thank you. Oops. I'm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Allie's in Queens. I loved your tour of your um, window. Window. Your, uh, oh my gosh, you can tell I'm tired. I didn't sleep very well last night. <clears throat> Allie, I loved all of your, your window art. It's not the right term, but. You know what I mean. It's so fun. Hello from North Carolina, Wizard Lake, Alberta. And let me see here. Texas, Vancouver. It's not even 5.30 in the morning and you're up watching me paint already? Thank you. Bright and early. I used to live in Bury St. Edmunds near you. So beautiful. Will you do more voice over? Oh, did you like the large painting that I did? Yep, that is my goal to do more of those for YouTube because I like doing my YouTube channel. I enjoy that. Um, but you know, when I film these, they're um, portrait, not landscape. And so, you know, when you watch them back, it's, you know, cropped funky. So I wanted to do more for YouTube. That's my goal. But it's always the getting around to all the things. But yes, I, that it, it will happen. I was actually going to film a little, <clears throat> maybe a little intro one today or tomorrow because he's home from college. So that might happen. <clears throat> yeah, so I have, <coughs> like a week or two ago, I did a large painting a painting a demo of painting large and I put it on my YouTube channel and I filmed it and then I just did a voiceover and talked about it instead of trying to paint and talk at the same time and it worked out okay of course you know the whole trick of it is learning to edit like you have to be able to edit the video film the video light for the video make the video paint the video <laughs> like it's sometimes I get it's just it's just a lot to learn and figure out. But I'm getting a little better at video editing. And I don't hate doing it. It's just fitting it in. The time it's the time commitment that's usually my problem, not the desire to do it. St. Paul, Minnesota, Indiana, Chile in South America, Middle East, Iraq. What time is it in Iraq? Is this posted? Yeah, I post all of these. Yes, Helen, this will be posted on YouTube later, so you can watch it this afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, good. I'm glad to know that you guys like that because I don't really get feedback on any of that, and it's like I, I don't know if people like it or don't like it. If I do know if people watched it, but I don't know if they liked it. I always need positive reinforcement for things <laughs> like all artists 325 in Cairo is in the morning or in the afternoon 4 30 these different times whoops got a little green in there that's where I'm not even gonna worry about it where those middles it's good to kind of look where that the insides of the flowers are now because I won't be able to see my grid pretty soon. Conversations with Cam. She said, I love how loosely you block it in. 
Me too. Me too. I love the loose block and then the looser the better. What I say. I make a little bit of manganese blue hue just because I love to add a little bit of that in. I missed the video you were talking about. Where can I find it? Did you say it's on? Yes. Um, Ellen, it's on YouTube. I painted a big painting of lemons the other day and just on a whim like it's not real well done I totally took all the pressure off myself because I really didn't plan to do it um so I just started filming it and I thought well maybe I'll try putting it on YouTube editing it and see how it looks so it's it's a little rough around the edges um but I filmed the whole thing and then loaded it. I voice did a voiceover and talked about what I was doing, my process and everything. I think that's good. Now I'm cleaning off my brush and I'll get out my pigment sticks. We don't need perfect to thank goodness, Helen. Thank you. If you did, I wouldn't be able to do it, that's for sure. And I'm not a perfectionist, even if I try. Do you paint this a la prima or do you dry each layer and paint it? Nope, I will finish this whole painting Hopefully in the next half hour. And it's oil paint. <clears throat> oh, no, I put a, a new, this pigment stick was sitting out, so it's rock hard. So I've got to clean it off. So I'm going to get a different one. <clears throat> I just threw it in my box when I was cleaning up my studio. Do you know anything of healing by painting? No, I don't, don't know specifically anything about it but I would think it's totally a thing I find painting to be the most relaxing um thing to do it's just very calming to me it's the way I start every day and I love it, it yeah it makes me happy happy's healing right do you stop using the medium oh yes I'm finished the medium's Jars closed up. I put the lid on it. I won't. Oh, that's not tight. I better close. Thank you for reminding me to close the lid. I'm moving that out of the way. I won't use that again. I just use it in the base layer. Just kind of make <clears throat> what I'm working into a little wet. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is just a pigment stick I use to kind of keep keep things loose. It's oil, um, oil paint in stick form. It's super fun. Your use of color always impresses me, especially how you exactly how it'll transform when the colors are on top. Yeah, this base layer that I'm doing here is really as you can see, super loose. I'm not being precious about anything. I'm not overthinking anything. I'm just putting in bits of color. And so in, in the end, I hope that some of these colors show through in my final painting. But um, <clears throat> like, I just love how that looks. I always say it looks like really loose, like it would be really nice on like sheets. <laughs> looks like a textile um, design a little bit, doesn't it? And now as I go in, <clears throat> and I'm, the colors that we just mixed up earlier, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just trying to be more intentional about where I place my colors. And I want to let these colors show through that are in the background. Little bits of them, some of the pigment sticks and some of the transparent colors. And it's exciting to watch it evolve. Like it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little addicted to doing it. It's it's just, I really enjoy seeing it all come together. Now I have some thick paint right there. I gotta get that off. So I have paint on my, this pigment stick, sometimes they really like, um, are glumpy. See how much glumpiness. And you could use that and mix that into a color. Like I'm, I'm playing with it here on my, that was that glumpy bit. I can go like that and then come up here and add it back into the painting. It's just not glumpy now. try to be more intentional with my brush strokes now um, but not precious about it 
because I feel like if you get, if I, I shouldn't say you, I mean me, I don't mean anyone else. Like everyone has different styles in painting and, and that's the charm of it that way. Everyone's artwork turns out completely different. And the more you do it, the more you'll develop a style where your artwork is specific to you because it always ends up now this paintbrush is wonky I gotta get another one I'm not happy with that <clears throat> so my paintbrushes need need thrown away hi Ren how are you okay but that's how you you know develop your own style as you keep practicing and figure out things that you like to do in a painting. But I do think it ends up having your signature. Like, you know, everyone's handwriting's different. Everyone's style of painting is different. Um, let me do some of my darker reds, which are maybe right here. And if you see, like the flowers, petals or flowers that are in the background are much softer looking. They're not as as in focus. And I can I wish I could tell you that I photographed them that way on purpose, but I didn't. It just happens. Don't know how. A little magic. Ellen says, "Did you try the boiling the tips?" Yeah, I like that idea, Ellen, but no, I did not try it. I didn't get around to that. I did think about it last time I cleaned my brushes, but um maybe Maybe this week I'll try it. I don't know. That would be a whole nother step where I'd have to like boil water. Hmm. <laughs> That's easy enough, doesn't it? And this has bits of this cool background color in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't get around to all the things. I don't know why. I like kind of that dreamy look of what's happening up there. I'm going to just kind of let that go for now. I can go in and adjust it, fix it, change it. But right now I like it, so I'm going to leave it. This, when you put in your background color like this, it kind of carves out where you're headed a little bit. I do like that blue. It's a little, um, not as thick as I might like, but it's fine. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Sometimes when you block in like that big area of um, that background, it kind of just, I don't know. This would be a beautiful pillow. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? I'd love that, Anita. It's too funny. But they always do look like that um, textile style. Maybe from the 60s, but it would be pretty even now. All right, enough of that. So, I'm having a sip. What's everybody having? Coffee or tea today? 8.35, we're still okay on time. This goes up. Oh, this has like a bright... I don't know if I'll be able to get that. I can always, if I feel like... I'm losing, like if it's getting too dark or something, I can always go in and um, use my little scraper and pull some paint so that the white of the canvas shows through. Well, it's not canvas, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> Hazelnut coffee. Yum. I'm having my... my uh, Fat cow coffee. Mm. 
Still in bed, it's 5.30 here. Mm, that's nice. That sounds wonderful. Whoops, got a thick bit there. This is <clears throat> yeah, I want to keep those very out of focus. Oh, I think I started to say that and forgot what I was talking about. But usually, you know, if things are further in the distance, they don't have hard edges. They're softer edged. And that's what gives that feeling of depth that like you can tell they're in the distance. Like just keeping them that simple. Suffering through green tea since temporarily giving up coffee. Oh, are you giving it up for Lent? That's a hard one. Give up coffee. Um, but it is a, a sacrifice, that's for sure. Martha. Martha's the one that I get my coffee from. Her husband delivered it to me this time. Martha, my mother-in-law says she keeps seeing you at Woodcrest. Now she knows who you are. Said that. She's so nice. Keeping it loose. I don't want to get precious with where I'm putting anything. I want to keep it fun. The goal is always to let some of that spontaneity stay in the painting and not have it get all tight. Like I love those colors right there. I don't want to mess that up. And that just happened by chance. <coughs> Excuse me. good I think hmm. does anybody have any questions or anything got really quiet <laughs> I think it's because my husband went to work the house just feels quiet so not that you guys are quiet Anne is delightful, so pleased that she finally knows me. Yes, yeah, she is delightful. She is something else, that Anne. I gave that a leaf feel. No, I just want that. I like that turquoisey color showing. I don't want to cover that up if I can help it. Um... So at some point, I kind of go in to try not to have any um, white showing. Although lately, sometimes I use my little scraper things and pull it back to white again. But I don't know what I do with those. Oh, they're right here. I could do this, play with it. Ellen says it's still mesmerizing watching you paint. Thank you. So this is just a little, like... A tool that's rubber tip tool to pull things off. She says, I noticed you tend to use that larger brush. Does that help you keep it loose? Absolutely. I have the habit of wanting to go to a smaller brush too soon. Yes. And that I won't I won't go smaller than that in this painting. <clears throat> like this this was the big one that I blocked in with. That's about an inch. And then this is the one I'm using now. It's probably you think three quarters of an inch? Yeah, probably three quarters of an inch. And I won't use a smaller brush than that. Because <clears throat> I do definitely think that paintings stay looser if you, if you um, use a larger brush. 
is when you get a small brush, then you get start to get precious with it and you keep it too tight. And I want it loose. I mean, not that a tight painting is a bad thing. I've just painted tight all my life because I've done graphic design and I've always done like mock-ups of products and things like that. So I always had to draw tight and I don't want to do that anymore. I love that little twist of brush, which gives definition to the leaf. You're so good at handling your brush. And it is just getting used to having it, like using a brush and handling it. <clears throat> It is just like anything else, just practice. I think that's probably good. Let me get a little bit of this. Okay. Yes, I'm Ellen. I'm pulling off paint. I'm using a little rubber tip tool and pulling it away because I need to keep that brightness if I get too much I loved a little let some of those like I love the texture that that left behind and I hope that that some of that stays in there we shall see um about what I'm doing here. Sorry, I'm holding my breath a little bit. I love that. Where do you get the rubber tool? It is... Um, I, I learned about doing this from my friend Beth Bath, and it's it's just a... Um, piece of rubber like from a window cleaning thing and it's just in a little in a little uh, whatever these things paper clip thing I have a, a little larger one too for when I'm working on big paints and then I have a really big one but I don't know where it is right now since everything's displaced here <coughs> but it's a new thing I've been Beth, my friend Beth does it and so I was kind of playing around with it myself and I, I do like the scraped off look to it Just to let little bits of that light show. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, did you hear my answer about the tool? It really is just a little handmade thing, a window cleaning tool. Hmm. That should be more of a... Okay, it's getting there. Bull clip, thank you. I never even knew that's what that was called in my whole life. Isn't that crazy? But it is a pretty fun name. A bull clip, that's what I'm using. Good tip, thank you. So if anybody wants to join me for my workshop in France, it's not too soon to sign up for it. Um, that's coming up next. I'm going to be teaching in France next um, June. And um, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Traquel also has a wipe off tool that looks like a pen. Oh, yes, this. Well, I don't know if this is the Traquel brand, but yeah, that's how I sign my paintings. And then this end has an angled bit. I don't know. Can you see that? Is that the one you're talking? I don't know if this is. I have lots of these, but I don't know if that's the Traquel one. <clears throat> that's the brush I love to use is Traquel. <laughs> All right, I'm being a little, little too cautious with what I'm doing here. I need to 
go a little reckless crazy now and add in some lighter colors. It happens I find myself being precious. I can confirm the retreat to France is well worth it. Highly recommend. Thank you, Michael. It was great having you there. So much fun. And I think I'm going to be maybe doing one in Italy too the following year. I've had a lot of people reach out to me about doing the workshops and, and they really are fun. I don't know what my hesitation is. Like, it's always hard for me to just dive in and say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I, I'm, I guess because I'm not a world traveler. I think that's probably part of my problem. It's like, oh, I have to get on a plane again. I do like to fly though. Yes, thank you, Barb. Barb and Michael were both there with me last year for my maiden voyage. <clears throat> It was magical. Now I don't know if I'm going to get to... I have to think about um, my process. I want to keep the glow. Although when I look through here, and when I look at it, because of those areas I wiped away, it does have a glow to it. So I feel like I haven't um, lost that. <clears throat> Get. I don't know what I'm fussing around and I would tell myself not to do that so I just need to go in and do my lighter lights Sometimes it's, <clears throat> I'm very <coughs> hesitant to dive in and do that. And I have no idea why. Like it really is fun once I start. It's just deciding that it's time to do that. And I find if I do this part of the painting too soon, my painting tends to get muddy. So I have to kind of wait until it feels right. Um need to dive in go for it that one it's what I would tell you to do it's hard to take your own advice sometimes or often right usually know the right answer like I have a couple things I have to solve coming up like like whether I want to teach in Italy some things like that and it's like I can't decide I get like decision par paralysis is that what it's called and I just don't decide and it's ridiculous because I think in my heart I know what the right answer is what is it that makes it makes you afraid to like say yes I'm just rambling on here um what did I miss here oh well, you, yes this is an ampersand gesso board it's a raised panel thanks Ellen Push this darker behind here. A little exuberant. Oh, that's okay. I like how that looks. Hmm. Now, do I feel like it's no? It's still it's still bright. Okay, I'm doing okay. No worries. It's coming together. How do you decide how much detail to add in the reference picture? <coughs> Irma says, say yes to Italy. Okay. Left leaf, extend it. That, <coughs> you feel like this needs to go. Um, 
How do I decide? I, I don't know. I just bring it to a point like I'll just keep adding things in a little bit, shifting, playing, seeing how it looks. And then after a while, when I start fussing with it and I feel like the painting's not getting any better, I'm finished. Um, that's a really strange description of how I decide, but it's totally how I decide. Um, so, okay, I see a problem here. My, I need to make this push back. Um, I'm looking for like inside of these um, spots. Okay, now I can do light again. Kindly save this tutorial. Yes, I will. This will be on my YouTube channel. I usually try and get it up there shortly after I'm finished here before I start diving into my real day, the work part of my day. This is the fun part of my day that you're joining me for. <laughs> I usually still spend so much of my day sitting at the computer. All right, just a few more highlights and then I think we're about finished. Um... trying to pull out on the, the more yellow petals and then the more pink. Oh yeah, that's pulling it. A big fan from India. Hi, how are you, Sonal? And there's the signature style of yours that I love. Oh, pulling in the, the highlights. Mm-hmm. Just gotta get better at doing this really big. And I've been working on that. I've done I just dropped off a commission painting this week. I have another one that's drying. I have one that I might be finished with, so that's been super fun. It's like the scariest thing to do, but it's it's just such a an important part of I don't know, learning painting I think <laughs> not painting confidence let's just say it's about confidence not learning to paint oh that that was a good little spot there just about out of time time flies when you're having fun oh, that pink's really pretty and your little Back of that somewhere else. All right, do you feel like it's popping? Oh my gosh, I only have five more minutes. I think I need to call her, call it finished. Just about. How did I take so much longer? I guess it's just a more complicated subject. Usually I'm okay with finishing my paintings in in the time I have. <clears throat> does this cut me off? No, I don't know if it does. I'm just going to finish it. If it cuts me off, just know that I will save this to my YouTube channel. And sorry if I missed the part about how you sign your name. Oh, well, I could do that a while. So I use this tool. It's a wipeout tool. It just is a rubber tip tool, and I'll just sign my name with that. It just pulls the paint away. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I love the purple background, too. It's very happy. Um, <clears throat> there's just a dot of green that I need in here. I love that a little bit. I don't know what that did for me. That's kind of pink in here. Ooh, that's pretty.
Those colors look really nice together. Yes, I'm using oil paint. Mm -hmm. and I need a little bit more. Oh, I have a little bit of white paint right here. This is very light right here. And I, I did use a larger brush just in the very beginning, but otherwise I used the same brush for the whole painting. I always say I'm a little lazy about brush cleaning, so I try to do that. And a little bit more white. So it's just about finished. Just need to see if I see any darks or lights that need a little kiss of anything extra. Um, maybe right in needs a little definition in here it looked a little flat and this um, yeah that helped make that look like a petal Helen says loved your your poppy painting me too I think I'm gonna do that big maybe this weekend I've been getting a bunch of panels ready um, so I have eight 24 by 24s that I would love to paint and have them kind of look a little bit like like maybe paint them as a series so it's just what I'm thinking we'll see what happens now I have to decide if I'm getting better or if I'm just changing it that's when I always get to the point where I know I'm finished um I think this still needs something What do you think? Call it a day. Um, I keep seeing things that I could adjust, like this needs a little. Yeah, that helped. Mesmerizing your brush strokes and your voice are just soothing. <laughs> Thank you. That's so funny to hear. I'm not, I'm, I always feel like I'm a little bit of a hyper type A person. And a lot of people tell me that. I've had someone say to me that when they can't sleep at night, they get up and listen to me on YouTube. Because <laughs> it's relaxing. I'm like, really? Me? <laughs> it's a nice compliment. Ooh, that was pretty. Uh, I think I'm about finished. I don't think that I'm making it better now. I think I'm just adjusting, changing, but not improving. I think it's still getting better. Love it. She says, love it. Oh, I just see one more. Let's just do. Pull that. And it is always good, like at some point in your painting, you can stop looking at your reference completely and just look at what the painting needs. Like, I love those pink showing through. I don't really want to cover them up. Um, and it doesn't have to have, because, you know, the person who, you know, buys the painting, they'll never see your painting reference. So if you see something in a piece of art, and that's the part of making it, you know, special and making it your own. Like if you see something that you think would add to it, then by all means do it. And don't worry about what your reference image looked like. Oh, right here's a little light. And then I got to stop because I'm going to mess it up. No, wait, that didn't work. Still not enough on my brush. There we go. Uh, <laughs> gosh, okay. Okay, finished. I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished. Put the brush down. Lynn, it would be pretty on the tea towel. Okay, so there's my reference. And then there's my, oh, look there. I don't like that little bit of white showing right there. Let me cover that up. All right. Um, and then there are the colors that I mixed up. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will save that and put it um, up on my YouTube channel. And the link to my YouTube channel is here in, inside of Instagram. Um, and what else? I don't know what else. I hope you guys have an amazing day. 
and um, we'll do it again next week. So thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out with me. It was great to chat with all of you, and I, I hope to see you soon. Thanks for coming. Bye.